Well, hello everyone. I'm Hi. Denise Genduso from the Wisconsin chapter, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our September High tutorial on web design. Uh, today with us, we are excited to have Erica of Phillips Miller. Our session will be interactive, about 60 minutes. There will be a Q&A afterwards. If you have other questions during it, please drop them in the chat. Um, after the Q&A, if time allows, we'll have a few minutes to talk a little bit about what's happening and any event that you would like to share as well. So let's get started. Oh, but before we do, I want to thank, I want to thank Tracy. Tracy for her leadership and for once again, hosting this platform. Uh, so let's get, yes, yay, Tracy. Okay. Thanks. So Thank let's, let's get started and, and meet our speaker. Um, Erica Phillips Miller is the founder of Web Design by Erica. She has over 10 years of experience with WordPress web design. While in college studying biochemistry, she began designing websites for a campus research lab and fell in love with the process and challenges of web design. Little did she know that web design and not biochemistry would become her passion. Since then, she says she's been playing with websites ever since. She has designed websites for the Blackbird Writers Group and our own Tracy Phillips, among many others. Based in the Pacific Northwest, Erica is also experienced with web design for blogging and e-commerce. And she also is a master in effective design and website content. It's my pleasure to welcome Erica. Take it away, Erica. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today. And uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm going to get my PowerPoint up and share screen. One moment while I get that up. Um, there we go. Can everybody see that? Yes. All right. I'm just going to see. Um, so while we're going along, if anybody has any questions that they want to uh, drop in the chat, I'm just pulling up my chat screen so I can see those as we go along. Um, drop them in the chat and um, Tracy and Denise are going to help me keep an eye on that. Um, so if there's anything that I'm talking about, drop a question in there, and then we'll have time at the end for um, more questions about anything and everything else. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> so this is just a heads up of um, what topics I'm going to go through today. Um, so uh, I did see some questions ahead of time that uh, people were talking about, and so I tried to um, answer as many of those questions as I could in my presentation. Um, there are so many different platforms that everybody uses, uh, WordPress, Blogger, Wix, like so many different website platforms. Um, I may not be able to answer questions on like specific platforms. My experience is in WordPress, so I can't answer those questions. Um, but some of the other more specific questions, um, I, I may not be able to help you with, but I'm hoping I'll be able to um, give you some tools to, uh, to answer those questions. Um, so uh, first I have a figured we'd start with why do I need a website? Um, what kind of website content do readers want? Uh, do I need a blog or a newsletter? Um, how to use your website to get reader feedback or build a following? Uh, and I'll share some of my favorite tools and pages to have on your website, um, some things that I like to use a lot. And then how do I set up XYZ on my website um, kind of across any platform? Um, that's kind of how I go through troubleshooting things or learning new things. So first off, I wanted to start out with this quote. Um, and I do have uh, my sources at the bottom um, of the, the slides here. And I can share the PowerPoint with you guys. Um, I think we can send it out at the end so that if you guys want to see the the PowerPoint content or any of the sources, um, you guys will have access to that later. 
Um, but I liked this quote. Um, Many authors operate their website as if it's an empty room. They unlock the door and then wonder why no one comes. You must send invitations, set out the food and host the party. Make your website an inviting place for readers to visit. And I wanted to share this at the beginning because I want you to kind of keep this in mind as we go along. Um, uh, it, the internet is a huge place <laughs> and it's, um, it can kind of go both ways, you know, if, uh, as soon as you have a website, you know, anybody can find it, but sometimes getting traffic is a little bit harder um, than we think that it's going to be. So it is out there, people can find it, um, but getting traffic can be hard. Um, traffic and search engine optimization are <laughs> entire topics in and of themselves that we're not quite going to um, go into today. Today we're going to focus more on website content. Um, but website content is kind of like the gateway to getting traffic. Um, you want to, like the quote says, send the invitation, set out the food, make your website an inviting place for people to come visit and give them, you know, things to keep coming back to your website for. And I did bold the word readers um, because you want to think about who your audience for your website is. Eh, excuse me. And that's going to be your readers, most likely. Um, it can be easy, I think, uh, for authors to tailor their website to other authors, um, like tailor their website content, um, blog posts, and things like that to other authors. Um, but keep in mind who your uh, target audience is, who you want coming to your website, and that's going to be your readers. So kind of keep this in the back of your mind as we go along. Um, and our first question, why do I need a website? Figure we would <laughs> start with a, a kind of general one. Um, first off, your website is your home online, and your website is part of your brand online. Um, and it looks more professional if your web presence includes a website. So if you think about, you know, if you were looking for a business, you know, a restaurant, something like that, and you, you know, you type them into Google and, you know, maybe they have a social media page, but they don't have a website. Um, that business may not look as credible as the businesses that do have a website. Um, also, with a website, you have full control of the content compared to social media platforms. Um, social media platforms come and go. Um, you know, MySpace is here and gone. Um, I think people, I, th I think the trend is going to be people moving away from Facebook and towards TikTok. Um, so I think social media is really important, but um, you don't have full control of your content or your audience on social media, uh, but you do have control of all of that on your website. Um, a website supports long form content, unlike social media. Uh, so things like blog posts, newsletters are a good place to put long form content. Social media, the posts tend to be a lot shorter, um, but your website is a great place to give your readers more information, more ways to connect with you. And also your website is a great way to connect with readers and prospective publishers. Um, you can do that by putting your uh, links to social media on your website, um, putting a contact page on your website. Um, and um, there are different ways that we'll talk about to uh, kind of invite more uh, feedback and engagement from your readers through your website. Any questions so far, drop them in the chat. Uh, but I don't see anything yet. So we'll move on to uh, question two. What kind of website content do readers want? Um, so I saw somebody ask this question and I thought it was a really great one. So I wanted to, to cover this. Um, and I, I found um, a good source on this. Um, it's in the bottom there. Uh, six things readers look for on your website. Um, this was based on a research conducted by Codex Group. 
Uh, 43% of readers want exclusive, they want to see exclusive content on author websites. Um, so this is things that are not on your social media, um, you know, maybe different from um, like your back cover of your book, they want to see behind the scenes or freebies. Um, you know, something that they can't find somewhere else. Um, because if they can, you know, if all of the content on your website, they can find someplace else, they don't need to come to your website. Um, uh, longer content and exclusive content is also great for search engine optimization. Uh, so you're getting your pages and your website ranked on Google. 36% um, want a schedule of speaking engagements and uh, appearances. Um, it makes it easy for your readers to find, um, and it increases your authority, um, you know, if you do speaking engagements and people can see that on there. If you don't do that, anything like that, that's fine too, you don't have to put them on there. Um, but if you do um, do, you know, book signings or appearances, speaking engagements, your website is a great place for uh, people to find that. Oh, okay, I'm seeing maybe some audio trouble. Um, how's, can most people hear me? Everybody hear me? I can. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep going. Uh, let me know if there's um, anything Erica, else. If, it, if it's, um, if it keeps happening, if let us know if it keeps happening, everyone. And, and it could be Erica's headphones because that's caused problems for you before, I think, with me anyway. Okay. It, sound, it yeah. sounds like the microphone isn't quite in the jack. Is there a jack you're using or is it Wi Fi? No, it's okay. Bluetooth headphones. Okay. Something just sounds like it's not the, the, the connection isn't quite making it. That's why it's so scratchy. Hmm. Um, but most of the time it's there. So you keep going. Okay. If it gets worse or if you can't understand me, let me know. I can um, try switching to my um, computer speaker. Um, but it, it sounds like most people can mostly hear me. So uh, keep me posted, but we'll keep going as is for now. 36% um, of readers want recommended books or inside information. Um, inside information is kind of along the lines of the exclusive content um, and recommended books. Uh, it's a way to help your readers out. Um, you're probably reading books in your genre. You can do uh, things like book reviews. Um, so if you make your, your website kind of a resource for readers um, with, uh, you know, because they're you're probably reading books in the genre, they're probably reading books in the genre. So, you know, letting them know what you're reading, what you think um, is a great way to add um, con uh, helpful content for your readers. 33% uh, want weekly emails with updates and news. Um, so this is your newsletter mailing list. And we'll talk a lot more about that in a minute. Um, and your newsletter is also a great place to add exclusive content. Um, and that could be uh, things about your writing process. Do you have a new book coming out? How's it going writing it? Um, things like that. Uh, your news, well, and we'll talk about this more in a second with newsletters, but um, it's also a great place to talk about any sales or events coming up. And also important on your website uh, is contact information and social media links um, so that uh, people can get in touch with you, they can find you on social media. Um, so if your website's kind of your home online, uh, if you have links to all of your socials, um, it's, a good, it's a good place for people to land to find your social media links. And then, do I need a blog on my website? Um, I did see this question at least once, so I figured we would talk a bit about blogging. Short answer, so kind of two answers to this. 
Short answer is no. Long answer is probably. Um, I My personal opinion is that you don't need a blog on your website. Um, if you hate it or you know that you're not going to be able to post regularly, skip it. Um, but we'll kind of go over some of the pros and cons and uh, some of the content that you can include in your blog post if you have a blog or decide to do a blog. Um, just uh, so you get a better understanding maybe of how a blog can work for you on your website. Um, but I always think if you hate it, skip it. You know, it can help, but if it's not something that you're gonna do regularly, that's all right. Um, so the pros of having a blog on your website, you can connect with readers. If you have comments on, um, it's a great place to invite a uh, discussion um, with your readers and website goers. Um, it's a great way to uh, promote your book or books. Um, you can add a, like a call to action at the bottom of your blog posts. Um, you know, say, you know, check out this, or I have this going on, or you can talk about, um, you know, different things about your books to kind of get people excited about it. Um, a blog is also a great way to get more website traffic. Um, I think a lot of the times when we Google stuff, we, we go to blog posts. Um, and a lot of those are like nonfiction, um, they kind of, but we'll go over blog post ideas for fiction writers. Um, I, I found a good list of those to kind of get you started. Um, but blog posts are a good way to get people coming to your website and coming back to your website because you'll have um, exclusive content, new content um, that people can come back to. And if you're writing blog posts, you can use that uh, to post to your social media. Um, so that's another, uh, you know, if you write a blog post, you can share it on Twitter, Facebook, um, share it everywhere. So that's another social media post that you'll have. The cons from blogging, it's time consuming. You know, if you do it every week, two weeks, you know, whatever schedule you decide that you want to blog on. Um, and I would recommend having a schedule um, so that uh, you're kind of consistent in how often you post. Um, can be time consuming. It, it is a long-term commitment um, because, and I think we'll talk about this in a second, yeah. Um, if you post some blog posts and then don't post anything for six months, a year, um, it all, a blog posts always have the date on them. And so people may come to your website, see that you haven't posted anything in a year, and then they might wonder if you're still writing, if the website's still active, if you're, um, if you're still active online. So you want to make sure that you keep having um, kind of consistent content if you're blogging. Um, and there can be a learning curve. Uh, I mean, from the tech stuff from how to post the blog posts, and then the content side of it, what do you write about? Um, there is a learning curve with it. And uh, we'll keep talking a little bit more about blogging and blog posts. Some do's and don'ts, like I was just talking about, keep it updated, um, because if you have old posts on your blog, um, uh, It'll make your website look a little bit older. It will make your website um, look like it's not updated often. Um, also use headings to organize the content. And I am going to come out of the presentation for a second to show you an example of headings. Oh, if it's gonna go, it's not gonna go. There we go. Um, Headings are these big, bold things. Um, kind of gives uh, you know, the benefits of long form blog posts, gives readers an idea of what's coming up in the next section. Um, it also kind of breaks up your blog post so it's not just a wall of text. Um, 
can be good for search engine optimization as well. Um, so make sure if you're blogging, you use those headings to break it up, make it easier to read. And we'll go back to the presentation. Let's back up. Oh no. Um, I miss, I didn't see a change. I, I'm not sure I saw what you meant by headings. Oh, okay. Um, let me see. I am sharing my screen, but I think that it did not. Let me see. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. I'm going to share this. Oh, thanks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, all right. So the headings are like these big bold things. Um, the benefits of long form blog posts, you know, and then it has some text there. And another heading increases time spent on page. Um, this one, you know, don't call it a newsletter. These are some of the sources um, in the in the PowerPoint, but they were good uh, good examples with headings. Um, so thank you for letting me know about that. I'm going to see if I can switch back to the PowerPoint. Here we go. Okay. Can everybody see the PowerPoint again? Okay, I'm seeing nodding. Oh no, I'm going too far. Here we go. <laughs> um, you wanna aim for longer blog posts. I would say at least 300 words for a blog post. Uh, 1,000 to 2,000 plus words is even better. And 2,000 is not too many. Um, some of the um, better, performing blog posts um, tend to be longer, maybe even over 2000 words. Um, and I think a lot of that is because you want to kind of cover a topic in detail. Um, and that can be that can be a little bit daunting, <laughs> you know, 2000 words per post. Um, so if you're just getting started with blo with blogging, um, or you're just starting a blog, uh, I would say maybe don't focus on that right away, you know, maybe have that as your eventual goal, but um, it can be a little daunting to say, okay, I'm going to post a blog post every week and it's going to be over 2000 words like that's a lot. Um, so maybe have that as your goal um, and just know that if you have a long blog post that's great like you don't have to edit it down like this is the long form content that you can put on your website that's different from the short form content on social media. Um, if you have a blog, do respond to the comments. It's a great way for your website to look um, updated. It's a great way to talk to your audience. Um, and with your blog post, definitely do entertain readers or answer a question that they have. Um, most, I would say most blogs are like nonfiction, like the ones that I was just showing you um, with the heading example. Um, you know, they answer a question like, how long should a blog post be? Um, and um, as fiction writers, uh, you guys are probably going to be more in the camp of entertaining readers. So I have a list. Oh. <laughs> In a second, I have a list about um, blog post topics, um, but I wanted to share another quote before we get to that. Um, and this is from a, a blog post on fiction blogging. Uh, now let's talk about how to make your blog entertaining. A mistake uh, most new authors make is they blog about the process. We figure since it's so interesting to us, it must be interesting to other people as well. It isn't, or rather it isn't interesting to anyone but other writers. Unless you're trying to attract other writers, skip posts on the process. Um, and this is like what we were talking about at the beginning um, about who is your audience and your audience is readers, not necessarily other writers. And so then here is a good list that I found of um, 
potential blog posts for fiction writers um, for entertainment uh, blog posts. You could do interesting bits of research you found while writing your book. Um, you know, if you're doing something historical or um, like police procedural or something like that, and you found, find something interesting while you're doing research, you could share that in a blog post. You know, people who are reading your books are interested in those topics. Um, so I'm sure that they would be interested in um, those types of blog posts. You could also share any graphics that you have, such as a map or anything. If you have like a fictionalized world or something, um, that might pertain a little bit more to like fantasy writers, but you know, any kind of graphics that you come up with, your blog would be a good place to share those. Uh, any recipes, real recipes, made up recipes, historical, those would all make great blog posts. You could do a list of quotes from your book or books. Um, you know, there are a lot of blog posts that are like a curation of quotes. You could do it with your books. Um, you know, or you could do a list of quotes from, you know, books in your genre and include quotes from your books as well. Uh, you could do short stories with your characters. Um, you know, people fall in love with your characters through your books, you know, they want to know what's going on with them. So maybe in between books or something, or if you have a short story with them, um, your readers would love to see that even if it was a short story with different characters, but it was in your genre, that would be a fun thing to share with your readers. Um, also book reviews, which we talked a little bit about before. Um, uh, it's a great way to kind of add, um, add interesting content for your audience. Um, we talked about that, you know, they're interested in the genre, you're probably reading books in the genre give them recommendations, give them book reviews. And this is just a start, you know, there's, if there's anything else that you can think of um, to entertain your audience, anything that pertains to your books. Um, and you could do nonfiction posts as well. Um, I always struggle a little bit to think about nonfiction posts for authors because you guys are more in the business of entertainment, um, but any sort of like, you know, like a how-to or a DIY or anything like that that you think of that's relevant to your audience, you know, go ahead and post that. I think that would be interesting. And I think Sharon. Tracy is going to say, I do have a comment. No, I, um, Sharon Lynn has a question um, that's kind of appropriate here. And she asks, how do you handle the changing nature of your blogging content? Yeah. That's a I don't know, question. Sharon, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit. I, I just started my blog, I realized recently, 10 years ago. And when I started it, it was basically a curation of things that were for writers, like tips or, or interesting like ways to think about your characters, stuff like that. And then a variety of things changed both online and in my life. And so I let it go for a while. And I've recently tried to, I mean, I stayed with it off and on, but I've recently tried to be more consistent again. I, I literally, I was daily when I started and uh, I did that for like a couple of years and then it's kind of fallen off and in frequency, but I want to get more frequent and I need to change as you said, that is for other writers. I need to change it to be of interest to readers. So I don't know if you, I mean, I just sort of made the leap without any explanation. I don't know if I should sort of go back and post data transitional post or what. I think, you know, keep the content that you have up. Um, and this is a great question. Keep the content that you have there. Um, you know, I think that's definitely not going to hurt you. I think that you could post um, kind of like an update if you wanted, like, you know, this is the direction I'm going with this. Um, I think even if you don't post um, an update, if you just kind of shift your direction, that would be just fine too. Um, so I would say, uh, yeah, keep that content there. Um, that's, you know, having more content on your website, I think is good. I think it's not going to hurt you at all. And 
I mean, websites, you know, social media feeds, like it all evolves, you know, and if you look at other, you know, I can think of a lot of social media feeds that I follow and their content really evolves over time. And, um, and I think that's great. And just kind of go with the, go with the flow of, um, you know, where you're taking your blog now and, um, yeah, keep that old content and just, uh, follow your new path forward, I guess. Does that answer your question? Okay. Good question. Thank you. Let's see. Now we'll go to, uh, do I need a newsletter or a mailing list? Um, and I'm flipping through my notes because I got talking and not looking at my notes, but we covered all that. Okay. Um, once again, probably, um, although my answer on this is going to be the same as a blog. If you hate it, if you know, if you know, you're not going to do it, don't do it. If you think that you can do it and be somewhat consistent with it, I think that it's a great way to, um, what reasons are here. Um, sending emails, um, keeps you connected to your audience. Um, you know, they may come to your website once and they may forget to come back. The internet is huge. Everybody follows a lot of people. Um, but if you, um, or if you get permission to send people emails right to their inbox, uh, they're going to get those little reminders about you, your books, your content. Um, your newsletter is also a really great promotional tool, especially if you're unpublished or working on your next book. It's a great way to uh, build a following online. And just like your website and unlike social media, you have control of your mailing list. Um, you know, like we talked about social media platforms come and go. Um, you could also potentially like, if you ever got blocked or had a problem with your account or something like that, lost your account, you lose your followers. Um, but that won't happen with your mailing list. Like you have your mailing list, um, you know, it's in your control. It's not something that the social media powers that be can, um, you know, have any, any control over you, you keep that. And then how do I get people to subscribe to my newsletter? Um, and my favorite way is to offer a freebie in exchange for their email address. So this could be an ebook, some short stories, uh, recipes, a quiz, a checklist. Um, you guys have probably all seen, um, uh, you know, different email list opt-ins. Um, such as these. Um, and it's another great way to add value for your audience. Um, you know, we've been talking about adding value through exclusive content, through things like blog posts, um, you know, so adding a little freebie and it would be something you make once, you know, maybe you make a, a PDF with like a checklist or um, some short stories or something like that. And then it just gets sent out to, um, people who sign up for your newsletter. Um, but it's a really great way to just add more value for your audience and give them like a little bit of an incentive to sign up for your newsletter. Oh, I see a question. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, do you wanna, okay. Do you wanna talk about this quick? Oh, I left my mic on, sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can, uh, it, it's just, um, if, if if, and if you guys don't know about Dan Blank, he is like a creative um, assistant. I don't know if it, another way to, to put it, um, but sign up for his newsletters because he talks about this kind of thing all the time. If you're trying to do too many things as a creative person, like if you really hate sending newsletters, don't do it. Find another way. You know, he talks about like, people who have thousands of Instagram followers and that's where they focus their attention or they have like, you know, a TikTok account with, you know, millions of followers because that's where that's going. And, and, and that's where those people focus their attention and, and not necessarily on newsletters or not necessarily 
you know, on, on stuff that just you really don't enjoy doing and you know that you're not going to follow through with it. So um, I can I'll find a link to his um, website and stick it in the chat in just a sec. But, yeah. And that's, that's a really great point. Like, you know, saying some of these things about, about social media, like it's not that social media is bad. I'm just kind of giving you some of the pros and cons of doing a blog, doing a newsletter, you know, how these things can work for you, but definitely like, you know, focus on, on what's interesting to you. Um, and not, I mean, because having a blog and a newsletter and social media, and like, that's a lot. Um, so just know how these things can work for you and kind of pick, um, you know, where you want to go with it. I think that's a great point. Thanks for bringing that up. I put his link in the chat. Cool. Thank you. And then some quick do's and don'ts on your newsletter. Um, think of your newsletter recipients as the in crowd and treat them like VIPs. These should be probably the first people to know about um, like a book launch or a sale or something like that. Give them kind of, you know, maybe some tidbits about what's going on in, in your writing process. Um, maybe share a little bit about your personal life if you're comfortable with that. Like these are the people who they came to your website, um, they signed up for your mailing list. They want to hear from you. So these are kind of like your VIP people, your, your kind of target audience. Um, and like I've been talking about, focus on providing value, freebies, insider information, sales, upcoming events. Your newsletter is a really great place to talk about all of that. Um, including a call to action, um, like email me back. What do you think about this? Or, um, you know, check out uh, my new book coming out. A call to action is great, but you don't want to spam anybody with sales requests. Um, so this is still along the lines of adding value. Um, and it, cause it's a two way street. Um, if you're just asking people to buy, but not adding value, people may unsubscribe from your emailing list. So, um, you know, your emailing list recipients can help you out. They're kind of your in crowd. They want to know what's going on. Um, so make sure that you are um, adding that content for them um, with calls to action sprinkled in. Um, and then focus on quality over quantity. You know, if you want to send out a quarterly, you know, it doesn't have to be every week, doesn't have to be every month you know, maybe quarterly or whatever schedule, you know, is going to work for you. Um, I would recommend setting it on a schedule. Um, because if you don't, I mean, and this is not not a huge deal, but if you don't send anything out for a long time, and then all of a sudden your email shows up in people's inbox, they might be like, oh, who is this? I don't remember subscribing for that. But if they know, you know, every month, every few months, you're, uh, they're going to get an email from you. Um, it's just a really great way to keep in contact with your audience. And then how do I use my website to get reader feedback or build a following? I saw this question. I thought this one was really good too. And this is kind of um, what we've already talked about. A blog or a mailing list is a great way to get feedback. Um, having comments turned on on your blog. Um, you know, or sending out a newsletter and ask for feedback, you know, you could say, you know, literally say like, what do you think about this? Or has this ever happened to you? Or, you know, do a poll, like I was thinking about this or that, you know, what are the votes for option A or option B? Um, there are a lot of different ways to kind of start a conversation through a blog or a mailing list. Um, and as far as building a following, if you're using your website to build your following, the newsletter is the best way to do that. Um, and I found this quote that I liked. Facebook has a couple billion users and Twitter has hundreds of millions, but everyone has an email. A survey conducted in 2018 found that there are 3.8 billion active email accounts. That's half the population of the planet all waiting for you. Um, you know, because everybody is going to have different social media platforms that they prefer. Um, you know, readers, you know, uh, 
um, every, just everybody kind of has their preference on what social media platforms they use, but almost everybody has an email. Um, and like we talked about before, you control your mailing list as opposed to it being connected to your social media account. Um, yeah. So getting feedback, building a following, blog and a newsletter on your website is a great way to do that. Then um, what pages or tools should I use on my website? This is more just like a list of some of my favorite things that I like to have on websites um, or some of the tools that I like to use. Um, as far as pages, you want to make sure you have a privacy policy. Um, in more recent years, there are some laws that require websites to have a privacy policy. And some 30 third party services, like if you're using Google Analytics or something like that, they require you to have a privacy policy. Um, you can pay somebody to write it. There are also free privacy policy generators. Um, this is not legal advice. <laughs> I'm not telling you which one to use. I'm saying you, pro you probably need a privacy policy um, page on your website. Um, and there are multiple different ways to do that. Um, Google Analytics is another one that I really like to put on websites. Um, it's a really great way to track your traffic. Um, I am not a master at using Google Analytics, <laughs> but if you want to know more about your traffic, about where it's coming from, things like that, Google Analytics is a great uh, tool to use for that. Um, we kind of talked about this earlier, but make sure that you have your social media links and contact info on your website. Um, if you, uh, you can use things like forms or, um, you can like in a little more technical, but you can like embed your email address, like without getting spammed if you like encode it. Um, but there, so there are ways to add your contact information to your website to avoid getting spam. That's probably the biggest drawback of adding your contact information to your website is sometimes you'll get, you know, spam messages and stuff like that. But there, there are different ways to do it um, to avoid or minimize the spam. And, and it's a great way for people to contact you. So I would say Definitely add your contact info if you can. Um, and especially if you don't want to add your contact info to your website, make sure that people can find you on social media so that they can contact you there if they want to contact you. Um, you also want to have um, links to buy your books or a bookstore page um, because it's a great way uh, to use your website as a marketing tool. You know, people come to your website, they're looking for your books. You say buy it here or order from me, um, boom, like add to cart. And maybe the most important one on here besides privacy policy is use good photos on your website. Um, it makes it look a lot, a lot cleaner, a lot more professional. And I added some websites here that I like to use, Unsplash, Pixabay, Pexels, and burst.shopify.com. These websites all have photos that are free to use for commercial use. And that's kind of the tricky thing about photos is you want to make sure you have the rights to use any photos on your website. Um, you don't just want to like Google image, you know, and, and pull photos off of that because you don't have the rights to that. These websites, the last I checked anyway, um, their uh, images are all free to use for commercial purposes. And I like to use the free for commercial purposes for author websites because, you know, it's kind of your business. You might have buy links, just cover your bases. Um, and have the um, free to use for commercial purposes website or images on your website, um, just so that you don't run into any trouble down the line. I've not heard of it happening, um, but cover your bases. But also another really great thing about using these websites is their photos are really good. <laughs> They're really high quality. They have a huge range of 
um, photos that you can download, use on your website, like, you know, nature shots, business shots, shots of people, a lot of photos of coffee, I bet. Um, <laughs> but so almost anything you could want, you can probably find on there. There are some um, stock image sites that are paid. Like I know Adobe stock images is one that's paid. These are all free to use websites. The downside of that is that anybody can use them. I think that the likelihood of you using an image on your website and somebody else using it and people noticing um, are pretty small. So I, I tend to use these um, free image websites, uh, even though other people could use them. I also have a comment. Unsplash is amazing. Uh, if you have Canva Pro, that has free photos too. That's a good point. Uh, Canva is a great place for photos and images and stuff like that. And talking about images, um, you also want to have compressed images on your website. And this is a little more technical, um, but you can put your photos into this tiny png.com and it will compress them because big photos slow your website down. Um, so if you can compress them before you upload them, uh, it'll make your website load faster. Um, and that's good for the user experience. Uh, we have a comment from Tracy, Adobe Stock Photos is paid as a paid service. That's what she uses. And she dropped the link in the chat there. Um, so that's another good option too. Um, so lots of good options for photos. But yeah, I think, you know, having those good quality photos on your website, um, just make it look a lot cleaner and more professional. And then how do I set up XYZ on my website? I kind of mentioned at the beginning, I can't um, answer questions on every platform. I use WordPress and there are a bunch of platforms out there. Um, in the comments and questions that I saw when I was putting the presentation together, I think everybody uses a wide range of uh, different platforms, but I could, figured I could go through a little bit like what my process is. Um, if I'm, if I come up against a problem, if I'm trying to do something new on a website, Google is your best friend. <laughs> I have spent so much time Googling stuff on websites. Um, and chances are, if you have that question, somebody else does too. Um, so the answer is probably out there. You could try um, typing your question and then add a forum at the end, um, because sometimes there are good forums where people are discussing those problems. And sometimes there will be a solution. Um, I know WordPress, if, if you use WordPress and search for anything on WordPress, they have a lot of like forums and stuff like that that come up. Um, and I'm sure that the other website building platforms do as well. Uh, YouTube is also a really great place for walkthroughs or if you learn visually. Um, I personally prefer to read stuff, so I tend to just Google. But if you're looking, but YouTube, like, you know, a lot of times they'll have a screen share. They'll show you like click by click what you do to, to set something up. Um, so that's also a great resource. Um, this one's a little techie, but especially if you're having an error on your website, consider contacting your hosting company, such as Bluehost or SiteGround or HostGator, a lot of, a lot of hosting companies, but whoever your host company is, um, if you have an error or something like that, consider contacting them. They probably can't, they can't change probably the content on your website. Like if you need to update something, they probably can't help you with that. Um, but any kind of like tech problems or errors, uh, if you contact them, at the very least, they should be able to tell you if they can help or not. Um, and the level of um, customer service and hosting companies is a little bit all over the place and changes rapidly even with the same hosting companies. But um, usually there's a way to contact your hosting company and ask them questions if you have them. Um, and then just a note, if you're hiring somebody to do website work for you, um, you kind of get what you pay for. So just make sure that you vet anybody that you're considering uh, hiring for website work. Um, if it seems too good to be true, 
it probably is. I, I know of multiple instances of people kind of getting a deal on uh, website work and then needing to have things redone um, because it wasn't done well the first time or, you know, it took a really, really long time. So um, it can be expensive. It can be time consuming having a website, um, but just make sure that you, um, you know, maybe look at like uh, portfolio or examples of work or something like that. If you're considering hiring somebody um, just uh, so that you don't have to duplicate your efforts, um, you know, if that too good to be true price ends up too good to be true. And I see a question. Um, I haven't published a novel yet, so I'm using a free site. How tough is it to make the switch to a paid site and hosting service? Um, do you want to pop on and um, where, just let me know, where is your free site? What are you using for that? I'm using uh, WordPress. Okay. Um, I think that it wouldn't be too switch to, too tough to make the switch. Um, and that would be something that your hosting company would probably be able to help you with. Um, yeah, they're pretty motivated to help you migrate your website to their hosting services. <laughs> um, so if you pick a hosting service that you wanna use, uh, they should be able to help you move it over there. And then do I have a favorite WordPress template? I do, I always use, well, I have two answers. Uh, the Ocean WP theme I really like because it's really customizable. Um, and more recently, I've been working with Elementor uh, Page Builder. You can use uh, Ocean WP and Elementor together. Um, but I like those because they are, there's a lot that you can customize in there. So quick summary of what I went over today. Your website is kind of your home online, part of your brand. Um, when you're thinking about what to add to your website, um, readers want exclusive content. So think about putting uh, website content um, that you don't have anywhere else. It's, it's different than you know, what's on the back of your book. It's different than what you post on social media. Um, you know, your website should have kind of its own content on it. Uh, a blog is a great tool if you can be consistent. A newsletter is a great tool to build a following. Um, a blog and or a newsletter are great ways to get reader feedback. Use good photos on your website and Google liberally and vet anyone you have hire for website work. Um, Couple points, a um, couple more points that weren't necessarily on the slides, but were kind of themes throughout. Um, just focus on providing value to your readers through your website, blog, mailing list, social media. Um, like the quote at the beginning said, set out the food, send out the invitations, like make it an inviting place for, for people to come. Um, make sure that you think about your target audience and your target audience is probably your readers, probably not other writers. So just keep that in mind when you're writing content for your website. And the biggest thing probably is do what you can. Um, you know, like I've said a few times, I'm not saying you need a website, you need a blog, you need a letter, newsletter, but I hope now you have a better understanding of what you can do with those tools. Um, but you know, start simple, start with a simple website, you know, maybe a free version of a website, um, maybe just have one page for now, consider adding a blog or newsletter. Um, if you think you can do that consistently, um, if you hate blogging and newsletters, skip it and focus your energy on something else. Um, but just start simple and start with, um, like a website is always going to evolve, right? Your website, your social media feed, it's always going to evolve. Um, you know, like we were talking about um, blog content evolving. So just start somewhere, you know, get your domain name, get a simple website going and, and go from there. You can always make it more complicated later. You can always add stuff to it later. 
and thank you guys so much for inviting me. Um, I love talking about websites, so I've had a lot of fun preparing this presentation and talking to you guys today. Um, we have, my presentation went a little long, <laughs> um, but I think we have a few minutes for uh, any other questions that people have. And um, uh, here is my email and my personal website. Um, if you guys have any other questions that I don't get to today, um, but you uh, want to ask me something, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, and yeah, I'll open it up if anybody has any questions. Well, I have a couple of follow-ups and then other people, please jump in. Um, first of all, thank you, Erica. This was very, very helpful. Are we able to uh, have a copy of your PowerPoint? Yes, absolutely. Um, I know Denise and Tracy, I sent that to you. Yeah. You're free to forward that to the group if you would like. I'll, I'll upload it into the group's IO so that it's available for everyone afterwards. All right, yeah. thank you. And like uh, I said, I the sources are at the bottom. Um, so like on a lot of the slides, I have sources from other websites and it was way too much information to include. Um, so go to those sources and um, if you wanna know more about any of those topics. I have another question about using color, a color scheme when you're designing your website. I know one of the websites that you have designed, the Blackbirds Writer website, has black and white and a splash of red, and it's really spectacular. Can you talk a little bit about choosing a theme for the fonts, uh, the background? Do you recommend that? Absolutely. Um, I really like just Googling like color palettes um, when starting a website and kind of find a color palette that you like that kind of meshes with like your genre with your personal style. Um, you know, so find maybe two to three main colors that you want to use um, in your web design and like blackbird writers is kind of black white red you could pick, you know, it doesn't have to be black white, you know you're going to probably use black and white in your text, but you could pick two to three, you know color colors to use um, and also fonts to uh, maybe pick a couple of fonts that look good together um, so that you have um, kind of a cohesive image with like your your fonts and your color scheme but yeah that's something that I like to do um, at the beginning of a web design is um, kind of find that color scheme and pick a couple fonts. Other questions from anyone else? All right, well, we're, we're coming up uh, on the hour and I, I know we have a few minutes left. If anybody wants to share an upcoming event or something that's important that you would like us to be aware of, uh, I'll just kick it off by saying a reminder that next Saturday is Sisters in Crime 35th birthday. So if you haven't registered for the full day of fun events, please do so at our national website. It starts at 9.30. Central Standard Time and goes all day with wonderful activities for us all. Anything else? I think Tracy, you wanted to mention something. Um, yeah. If any of you guys are interested, you know, I think um, at the beginning of this, we, we were talking a little bit about the Blackbird Writers Flash Sale, which is coming up in October again. Um, and the for the Flash Sale, we've included like many many authors who are not involved in within the Blackbird Writers group. So I will be sending out invitations beginning next week to, to our group and or to Midwest Writers Association and the Midwest chapter, um, the two, um, what was they saying? Um, Mystery Writers Association Midwest chapter and to several other Sisters in Crime chapters. And, um, you know, if you're interested, please, I know some of you have in the past, Peggy, you included your books um, in the flash sales in the past. And so please consider joining us again for the flash sale, which is going to be on Halloween weekend. All right. Well, thank you all. And a special thanks to Erica for her collective wisdom and knowledge. Once again, it was wonderful. And thank you all for taking time to be with us today. Thank so you. until next time, have a wonderful weekend. Yep. Thanks, Bye Denise. For now. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.